Physics is one of the easiest subjects to have a very high score in jam, but that's only if you understand the game and then you know how to play the game right. I didn't understand this whole thing until just before my final jam exam, where I understood how some things were done and how some things were meant to be done, and I implemented these techniques to help me achieve good success. In my first jam, I had a score of 51%, and then in my final jam exam, I had a score of 91%. A whole lot of things happened between these times and on this video I'm going to share with you practically everything I did to have such an excellent score. And I guarantee you that if you stick around to the end of today's video and if you implement the techniques I'm going to share with you, you will have an excellent score that could be greater than the score I had in your next jam physics exam. Yes. A little about me, I'm Namdi, a first class graduate of chemical engineering from the University of Oyo. And on this channel, my aim is just to help you ac achieve academic excellence. Now, without wasting much time, let's get right into it. Firstly, I'll share with you what I did, and then I'll go ahead to give you advice on things you need to do so as to help you before your jump exam and even in the exam hall, so as to have a very high score in your jump physics exam. Now, if you observe critically, you understand that a greater part of physics has to do with calculations and formulas. And this is one thing the smart ones understand that help them have a score of 98%, 99% and all of that. But then for the other ones who underperform, there is something they are not understanding. Firstly, it could be that they don't know these formulas accurately. And secondly, it could be that they know these formulas, but then they don't know how to apply these formulas accurately. Now, tackling these two factors, these were the way I went about them. Firstly, when it comes to handling these formulas, knowing them correctly and then applying them correctly, this was what I did. I understood that knowing these formulas and having them stuck in your memory is not dependent on how frequent you use these formulas. You can come across them 50 times or even 100 times, but then, if you do not make conscious effort to have them stuck in your memory, you may not have them at all. You can only have them or utilize them only when you see them in your notebooks. And that's not the best. So what I did was, when I, when I came across new formulas, I tried to um, utilize them. When I write them down, I make conscious efforts to retain them, to recall them. Yes, and I used to have a notebook, a small um, notebook, something something like this but then the tick covered notebook and in this notebook i used to have a i used to write down these formulas like in this case now i will just split it something like this as small as this so i split each page into two and then i write down every new formula i come across so anytime within the day or within the week i just think about any formula and i try to recall them but then have difficulties in doing so i just go back to the notebook and then i just check I recall and then try again to make sure I retain the formulas correctly. And sometimes even when I even try to um, recall these formulas and then I do, but then I'm not so sure if I was actually correct and I need some kind of um, confirmation. I still go back to the book and then I still check. So doing this helped me a lot that before my jam exam, I had these formulas in my fingertips. I used them accurately and then I was so sure of these formulas each time I used them. Now, for the other factor of knowing these formulas, but then do not know when or how to apply these formulas. This was the way I went about it. Firstly, I understood that practice makes perfect. So if I know a formula and then I consistently use this formula, with time I will know how to apply this formula. You may not be taught how to use this formula, but then as you keep solving consciously, you just know how and you know when to apply these formulas correctly. And one beautiful thing about subjects like physics and mathematics is that when you solve from simpler problems to advanced problems, and as you just keep going up the ladder like that, your motivation increases. When you solve a simple problem, your motivation increases when you get it correctly. And then when you go to the next, a more complex problem, your motivation increases. So like that, with that, if you do that consistently, you will not just get the motivation to keep solving, you would also find it very interesting to keep solving. So these were the things I did. So I kept solving consistently. And as I solved consistently, the whole thing became really interesting. And I even wanted to solve more. So this whole thing helped me such that before my JAM exam, I had solved past questions from the very beginning of JAM till the most recent year before my JAM exam. So these were the things I did. And as you practice, 
also you too will also know when and how to apply these formulas because sometimes these examiners can be very very tricky they may just want to play around your intelligence but if you know how to apply these formulas correctly you wouldn't fall a victim for example if you're giving like for a formula like mass times acceleration that is force force is equal to mass times acceleration sometimes you can be given a question and then you can be asked to find the mass and the acceleration when you have the force. That's very straightforward. That's, but other cases, you can just have force, you can just have um, acceleration, but you don't know the mass. So in that case now, you can just do apply basic mathematic operations to get it. Although I'm just saying this on the very simple terms, on the very basic, on the very basic levels. Or in an example like the calculation of potential energy, of course we know that calculation of potential energy, potential energy is equal to mass times uh, gravity times height. You can be asked to find potential energy, which you just go by multiplying mass times gravity times height. So that's straightforward. Sometimes you may be given the gravity, you be given the mass, given the potential energy, and then asked to find the um, the height. In that case, you just have to apply basic mathematic operations. Sometimes you may even be given mass, gravity, height, and even given velocity. And of course we know that, that if you practice well enough, you will know that velocity has nothing to do with the calculation of potential energy. So all these things come with time when you practice a lot. When you practice a lot, in an example like that, you will understand that Velocity has nothing to do with the calculation of potential energy. So you just laugh about it and then just use the available with other parameters like the mass, gravity, and height to find the potential energy. So this one is just on the basic terms. There are other advanced cases where this whole thing can be played out. It only takes practice to understand how well a formula is being used. In my time, what I used to do then was I used to have a, formula, a, a, a timetable. And basically, every day within the week, I practice. I practice and I practice really well. I had time I went through physics, I had time I went through mathematics. And these are the reasons why I had great score. Now before I bring this video to a close, I want to give you some kind of advice that will help you well, that will help you really well. And the first advice on the list is that as you practice this, your, as you practice for jam physics, do not practice with calculators. There's a reason for this. Because I understand that if you use calculator, you may want to use calculator and then you feel like, oh, nobody's watching me and this, 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 this. But if you keep using calculator, you wouldn't be very fast in the exam hall. The number two thing I would want to advise you is try as much as possible to memorize um, special functions, for example, trigonometrical functions with special angles like 30, 40, and 60. Just know these things, whether they are given in the exam hall, they are not given. Just get to know this thing and if you some common constants, just try and memorize this whole thing. It will go a long way to help you so that you'll be very fast in the exam hall. Now, the third thing, the, the third advice I would want to give you is try and have a study partner or you attend tutorials. There are two basic things these things do to us. Number one, it gives us motivation. It gives us the drive to keep going and then keep practicing because when you go around, you see people around, people who are doing things, or you have somebody who around who is doing the same thing you're doing, you just stay motivated and you want to, you know, keep up. Now, another thing it does is that when you have a study partner or you have your attend tutorials, now there are some things you may not find out when you're studying alone but which you would find out in the course of this tutorial. You can just ask somebody. Sometimes you may not even ask the person itself. It can just fly through your ear. Or the person may even ask you, but then you do not even have the answers to these questions. And then in that case, you just go back to find the answers yourself. So in the course of that, or trying to provide answers to the person, you yourself, you will learn. And in the course of that, you keep growing. So with this, we've come to the end of today's video. And I hope you found um, value in this content. Please, if you do so, don't for, don't, do not forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so it can get to the reach of other people just like you who are aiming to have a high score in JAM this year. So until next time, see you.